All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I hope y'all doing all right and staying solid in these times that we're in. I hope that your relationship with the Most High is getting better. I pray that your lives are improving daily. I pray that you're improving every area of your life, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, and emotionally, and all areas of your life as well, you know, just everywhere. And I pray that your life is going in a better direction and things are opening up for you. Now, today, I just want to uh, do a reading um, today instead of actually you know, go into the scriptures and um, explain a whole thorough message. I just saw this uh, email popped up in the newsletter. This newsletter popped up in the email, and I was just like, wow, this is a pretty nice timing of this email. And the title of it is Get Out of Your Routine. So it's basically some church notes from Jen DeLeon, and she usually listens to certain sermons from different speakers, and she'll jot down some notes and take out um, key mess- key points in each message. Um, from the speakers, so I just want to read that to y'all, pass it on to y'all, because I felt like it was very good timing, and I definitely needed that word. So I hope y'all can get this confirmation as well. And um, as far as far as getting out of our routine, we gotta stop living so limited, and stop living so boxed in, and living on such a schedule. You know, we gotta have a much better life and much more things to do and get done throughout our days and weeks to a point where it doesn't feel like a chore, or does it feel like an errand, or does it feel like a routine? It feels like something we actually love to do. And we have more freedom and joy in each day that we have. You know, we got to go through life much better. If we keep living life according to schedule and according to routine, we'll never live a full, abundant life. You know, um, when you position yourself for much better things in life and have more fun and enjoy your life better, you know, you can get the most out of life. You can have better experiences, better memories, better moments and the whole nine. So I want to read this titled Get Out of Your Routine and just go from there. All right. Jen DeLeon, Get Out of Your Routine by Sarah Jakes Roberts. So that's the person, the, um, the sermon she was listening to. So if you're someone who is always looking for the, egg, the end or exit of a relationship or opportunity, this message is for you. Stop sabotaging yourself. It's not, good to be, it's not too good to be true. There is life-changing power and breakthrough outside of your routine. You've been anxious and waiting for more, and God is about to pull you out of your routine. Anxiety, depression, or heartbreak is not part of your routine. It's time for you to get out of the cave you've been in. You have to be willing to break out of the old so you can step into the new. The old is all you know and what makes you comfortable. But when you step into the new thing, you can't grieve over the old thing at the same time. That place you call darkness used to be called home. But it's time for you to get out of it and grow and not need the same things that once fed you. You have to give yourself permission to get out of your routine. Permission granted. Allow God to get you out of your routine and disrupt your life. When we are in a relationship with the people, it's not just so we can show up for them and they can fit in our picture. There's an expectation and reality that you are going to lose parts of yourself. When you have a baby, you lose part of yourself. But what you gain in return is worth what you lost along the way, what you lose along the way. There's no way that you can be successful in a relationship unless you're willing to lose a bit of yourself. This is how you qualify that losing. You qualify by making sure I'm not giving up a piece of myself in exchange for something that's not worth giving up. It's an equal trade. Yes, I lost a little of my independence, but what I gained in partnership is worth what I lost being an independent woman or independent man. So many relationships end up suffering because people are living in the fear of losing myself and the end of me. When we get new jobs, we fear that eventually the new the job is going to come to an end. We don't trust it will sustain us. We end up self-sabotaging because we're always looking for the end. How is this going to fall apart? How am I going to lose myself? How is this going to disappoint me? That self-sabotage and living with the end in mind keeps us in maximizing the present. Maximizing in the present. You cannot bring the fullness of who you are into a relationship or opportunity because you're looking for an exit. We're looking at how can this end, not how can I build it. You can only focus on building. You can't raise a newborn and think about the day they'll walk out of the house or you'll miss out on what they need in the stage of their life. If you're going to be in this thing, you're going to have to be in it all of the way. If God is going to call you out of it, he's going to know how to get your attention. If God has placed you in it, you have to stay, flu- you have to stay flat-footed in it and show up in the fullness of who you are. Environments or wombs? It's just about what you can do and what this environment is producing on the inside of me. You can't look for your way out or you're going to miss you. 
The fear of waiting for the end is how so many people end up betraying themselves because they're always waiting for an opportunity to run out in a place to no longer feel safe. A place to no longer feel safe. You've been waiting for God to show up and God's been showing up, but you've been calling it in the end and taking it as a sign that it's too good to be true. You've been thinking if it's too good to be true, I don't want to step in it because I don't want to lose it. But God says if you would trust that I sent it to you, you will step into it without fear. And if we step into it without fear, you will see it's not meant to kill you. It's meant to awaken you. Let go of the thinking that this thing is coming to an experience of life in a fresh new way. God has been trying to tell you that 2022 is the year of the jump off point where you break out of that routine once and for all. You've been out of it once, but you slip back. This time, you're never going back to the way it used to be. You're never going to be You're never going back to the way you used to think. You were meant to wage war on hell and generational curses, on the industry, on homelessness, on the criminal justice system. If you sit back and get in your routine, then the enemy is going to know how to attack you. God's got to wake you up. This is not just an idea. This is war. You can't do it and stay in your routine. Those distractions are taking momentum away from your fight. You're worried about the wrong thing. Who cares what they think about you? When you have an encounter with God, it's not so that it stays with us. It will start overflowing and start shaking up our relationship. It will start shaking up your relationships and friendships. The trauma of waking up not knowing which blow you're going to get today. The trauma of waking up not knowing how you're going to take, how you're going to make it to the end of the week or the end of the day. When you have that, you have a tormented spirit. You can have a tormented spirit and still show up and be strong for everyone else. A tormented spirit means that your spirit has lost peace somewhere and fear has invaded the way you live and think. Tormented by the fear of loss, fear of failure, fear of abandonment. When God sends you a message that brings you peace, you've got to bring an altar there. If you're searching for purpose, search from a place of peace. Purpose is not for the desperate, hungry, or thirsty. You were in purpose, but no longer in purpose because you got knocked out. Go back to the place of peace. What were your habits? Who are your friends? If you're desperate, I can't give you vision or you will manipulate it to your vision. God can only give you, God can only give vision when you're not seeking validation, when you're not trying to prove something to those who slept on you. You may know who I used to be and how I used to act or think, but you you don't know who I am now. Give people an opportunity to be introduced to a new version of who you are. This version of me has peace. I don't have time to be petty. This version of me does not gossip. This version does not care what other people think. Peace is a weapon. It doesn't look like it because it's silent, because it's not loud, but it's the most powerful weapon you can have in a world that is distracted. Peace is knowing that the Lord is with me, knowing that I'm living in the presence, knowing that I've been obedient to who God has called me to be. Everybody else can look for money and friends and who's got what. I'm looking for peace. If you trust who I am, you'll stop looking at them and start looking at me. If I disconnect from God, I'll be desperate. If I stay connected with God, I'll have vision of everything that I need. God wants to give you peace you couldn't access because you were tormented. God can bring you healing for a stage of life you're not even in anymore. God's peace is so powerful that it can give you peace for the things that didn't go the way you wanted things to go. God wants to give you peace before position. Peace in your singleness before your position. The kind of peace where you can say, God, if you didn't do it, anything else at all, you've already done enough. If you have peace before power, you won't abuse the power. All the pieces are there for what God wants to do in your life. The finances, the connection, the relationships, etc., etc. But the person who knows how to hear God's voice to bring it together is not there yet, and it's you. Everything you need is already there, but you've got to see it the right way. You're not just going to come out of your routine, but you're going to change the routine of everything connected around you, too. Sometimes you've got to get out of your routine in the night. Sometimes it doesn't happen where everyone can see and where it's on display. All right. So that was the church note from Jen DeLeon from the sermon of Sarah Jake Roberts. And um That was a really good timing of that releasing statement, man, that releasing of the newsletter, man. We have to get out of routines, you know. We got to live a full, abundant life, and 
we got to expand and live larger because the most high wants more out of us. All right. We got to want more of our, out of ourselves as well. You know, we got to stop living a small, limited life. You know, we got to be more, um, more creative, more innovative and more free. All right. So that was just the reading on that. So what I want to do is remind to y'all how great the most high and his son is and just go from there as we close out. Hallelujah. All right. Now, he is the Adam, the advocate, the almighty, the alpha and omega, the amen, the apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atonement sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessed and only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd. Christ, Christ of God, consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, eternal life, everlasting father, faith and true witness, faithful and true, faithful witness, first and last, first begotten, first born from the dead, first born over all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church, the hero of all things, the high priest, the holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jesus of Nazareth, the judge, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, the king of Israel, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the king of saints, king of the ages, king of the Jews, the king, the lamb, the lamb of God, the lamb without blemish, the last Adam. The lawgiver, the leader and commander, the life, the light of the world, lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, Lord Yah, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Ben Yahweh, Ahiah Yeshua, Yeshua, Barakatha, Shalom, our righteousness, Lord of all, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, man from heaven, man of sorrows, mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant. The Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, only begotten son of God, our great God, a savior, our holiness, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrifice to Passover lamb, power of God, precious cornerstone, prince of kings, prince of life, prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection and life, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, ruler of God's creations. The rule of the kings of the earth, the savior, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, the son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine, the, the, way, the truth, the way, the way, the truth and life, the wisdom of God. The witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word. Hallelujah. Amen. And there we, that's where you have it. That's how great the most high son is. I pray to God that whoever listens, I pray that you get baptized. You start your life forth for the most high. I pray that you break out of your routines. I pray that you step into a new life and new beginnings. I pray that you have a fresh new start and you become a new person in Christ. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.